Well, Frankie, welcome to the Sleep Case 4AM series. So this is a series we created to address risk um, that the industry is facing in the insurance and reinsurance uh, space. And uh, we're so grateful to have you here today. But before we dive into the 4AMers and what keeps you awake at night, I'd like to take a minute to ask about you uh, and the uh, obviously role you have within Hyper Exponential. Yeah, of course. So I'm at Frankie. I'm the senior content and comms manager for Hyper Exponential. I've been working in B2B technology for almost a decade now, as terrifying as that is to say. Um, so yeah, we provide pricing and underwriting software for the commercial PNC market. We do a lot of thought leadership, a lot of research, uh, and we're very lucky to have some very talented and knowledgeable SMEs at our exec level. So we do a lot of work with them. Wonderful. Hyper exponential. It's in the name. So obviously super charge uh, as a brand. We, we see it all the time. So tell us a bit more about what's your 4 a.m. or what keeps you awake at night? Yeah. So perhaps unsurprisingly, uh, AI, but more specifically working out the right way to adopt and implement AI. I think we're at this interesting space in the market at the moment where there's a lot of excitement, a lot of personal experimentation, and people are seeing some pretty good like quick wins that are giving them that bit of fulfillment, especially on the sort of personal use case side of things. So mm -hmm. like our chief customer officer tech, like he has a friend who's using ChatGPT to write custom bed stories for his kids every night so he can read them like bedtime stories that are actually relevant to them. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got like a really great subject matter expert called Jamie uh, and our field CTO has built a Jamie bot where he downloaded the transcripts of every single insurance market enablement session that had ever been run by Jamie, run it through a GPT and turned it into a little Jamie bot that will quiz you on market knowledge, but also grade and correct your answers uh, with my colleague Jamie's typical dry sense of humor and at times like slightly insulting responses <laughs> to your lack of knowledge. Okay. Um, but you know, like great, really kind of like fun, personal experimentation where you can see quick results, where it gets more difficult mm. is in working out how to turn that like excitement and personal experimentation into something that can actually be applied in a more structured, operational, you know, scalable way. Um, there's a lot of different tools, a lot of different processes, a lot of different workflows, but I don't think many people have nailed yet mm -hmm. what that end product and end workflow is going to look like. The pace of innovation is just so, so fast. Like anytime I'm trying to prepare someone for an AI focused insurance talk, I have to be checking the news, you know, 48 hours before they're going to go on stage because it might be the case that, you know, one of the foundation model providers has just launched their latest model or, you know, Anthropic has launched a financial services product and that pace of change and innovation is really, really difficult to keep up with. Wow. So you obviously showed us how AI affects the personal lives of a professional and how this then translates into the professional uh, state. But um, so it's obviously very significant. And uh, the is the challenge getting everybody on the same space when it comes to AI? Yeah, definitely. We actually ran a big uh, piece of research earlier in this year around AI maturity in specialty and commercial insurance. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that became really, really clear there was you've got a lot of, again, kind of low maturity point, pain point, like niche solutions cropping up, but there really needs to be a clear strategic roadmap, executive buy-in and top-down leadership, and a really, really good quality training for employees, getting everyone on the same page. Mm -hmm. I think one of the key stats that came out from that was 70% of employees said that they don't feel like they've had anywhere near sufficient training on AI from the company sort of top down level. I think that's one of the areas at HX or hyper exponential HX mm -hmm. uh, where we've really nailed it. It's like our, our co-founder and CEO Amrit has been dubbed our chief AI officer uh, for how much he's kind of leading the charge from the front there. We have an AI squad which has a representative from each function and department who kind of come together. They spend one day a week just on exploration and kind of improvement of AI initiatives within the business, building out AI tools within the product. And that then means that that person can kind of take those learnings and expertise back to the rest of their sub function and distribute it in like a really clean way. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of a challenge that 
if you take the approach of AI is everyone's job, it's no one's job. Mm -hmm. So there has to be some real structure and wraparound for it. I think another part of the challenge is with every wave of technical innovation, you go through the same kind of curve of a journey mm -hmm. where at first you get this real explosion of interest and excitement and adoption and it's all great and amazing and we've all been sold on what the promise of AI can deliver. But then you start to stall on progress as you reach like the disappointment phase of the curve, which is where you get to that point where yeah, you've seen all the things that AI can mm -hmm. do and it's like, oh, great, amazing. When you actually try and apply that to make it suit the specific quirks of your use case and your workflows and create a product that ends up being high enough quality, mm -hmm. it's just not quite there yet. Um, and you start getting frustrated and it's very easy to sort of lose your motivational momentum in exploring AI as a whole. Mm -hmm. And organizations need to get really, really good at providing that like reinforcement structure wrap around shared learning so that that disappointment phase of the curve can be done and over with a little bit quicker and you can get back up into the sort of operational enterprise scale side of things. Absolutely. It's great to, to hear more about training because AI kind of has been there for quite some time. It obviously reignited and now everybody is in, it's, do you think it's a buzzword? Has it become a buzzword? There definitely is a bit of, I've been calling it the AI ick factor, which okay. is like the sort of public perception around AI. So AI has been great for democratizing access to a lot of really complex kind of professional skills and workflows and you know coding, content creation. But that's also resulted in this kind of trend towards like AI slop or like AI brain rot. <laughs> and I think at the moment we're seeing a bit of a, a peak again where the public perception of AI is, is quite negative in a lot mm -hmm. of senses. It did push the boundaries. Uh, it's not a ready-made solution. You need to embed or sorry, input the right information to be able to get the right outcome. And sometimes it is not right. As you said, the idea was there. The tools were available, right? You chose in different platforms, but then the outcome didn't seem to be what you envisioned. It's that whole fail fast culture, right? That's, like that's very big in startups and scale up life in general. Mm -hmm. I think that's the correct approach to be taking with AI right now, because as I said earlier, right, the pace of innovation is so, so quick. Mm -hmm no one really knows how to perfectly do all of this. Like you've got to just get in there, try, experiment, play around, but also know when to, to call it, right? Like when Absolutely. to say, actually, no, this is not an area where AI is going to be useful. Uh, anything kind of agentic, I think that's going to be the future. Anyone looking at trying to build something out where you're going to be doing core parts of your workflow through an agentic interface, you know, essentially a chat bot, mm -hmm. Great. I don't think that is going anywhere. Anything you can do to build to that, wonderful. Anything you can do with AI on the back end around automation, data analysis, kind of really, really decreasing the time spent on those like admin heavy manual burden tasks. We see this loads in commercial PNC insurance, right? Mm -hmm. They're dealing with massive, massive pricing models, you know, the monster spreadsheets that take two hours to open and someone changes one field and it crashes everything and there's no version control, like great applications for AI mm -hmm. there. Some other applications worth experimenting with and trying out, but experiment fast, fail fast, move on to the next. Wonderful. Um, you have touched a little bit on brand reputation and how easily it can be triggered when you use AI, in this case, we've spoke a lot about it. Can you tell us a little bit more about um, what you've been doing recently or what challenges you face within brand reputation as you grow as a company? Yeah, for sure. I think especially when you're working in a sector like insurance, a traditionally very risk averse sector and a sector that's grounded in like really deep vertical expertise, data analysis, evidence-backed research, you know, you've, you've got to be really careful about what you put out into the world. Uh, but certainly for us as, you know, a, not only a forward-thinking tech company and how we're using AI internally, but we've also made a massive push on how we're embedding AI within our product. It's a really core foundational element. We've embedded it across almost everything. Mm -hmm. um, you've got to be really careful about how 
you position yourselves among kind of that narrative. Mm -hmm. And I think reinforcing that human connection, you have experts within your business. There are mm -hmm. plenty of experts within the market. Like I said, this, this is a, a sector really grounded with deeply, deeply technical expertise. You know, mm -hmm. I cannot sit and write a white paper on AI maturity and insurance. I need to speak to those real experts. Mm -hmm. It's working out where to match that human in the loop element with the AI element. Mm -hmm. It's a, like, Internally, we've said AI is about doing more with more, not doing more with less, meaning this is not about like, yeah, use AI and just replace all the humans, you don't need any of that anymore. It's about how can you augment, kind of expand, scale, improve. And that's so, so important when you're thinking about what you're putting out there in terms of brand. I always say brand to me is like the value you provide to your audience outside of your product. Mm -hmm. So let's say your product offering, 10 out of 10, love it, does everything you told me it was going to do. Yeah. But what other value are you providing to me as someone that engages with your brand? Maybe that's mm -hmm. education, maybe that's upskilling, maybe, maybe it's just emotive, maybe it's experiential, maybe you just know how to throw a great cocktail party and get the right people in the room. Yeah. Um, but that is that really crucial bit of brand where I think you need to focus on building that like consistent credibility, trust and value. Like I mentioned about how important like the emotive and kind of that side of things mm -hmm. is outside of your very serious, you know, insurance product offering. Inject some fun into things as well, like inject some personality just because you're in a serious research backed sector mm -hmm. doesn't mean that people aren't people at the end of the day. A uh, perfect example, our president and CRO Richard delivered a presentation at uh, connected underwriting in the States yesterday uh, to a room full of 200 underwriters about uh, the desire for digestible data in the market. Okay. And halfway through his presentation, he played a clip from the uh, 2000s teen movie Road Trip. I don't know if any, any of you have ever seen it, but there's a scene where they're trying to drive a car over a bridge uh, and he had kind of like Microsoft Paint style annotated over the top of the clip. So it represented like actuaries, AI, like an MGA and a carrier, like going through this scene together, like deliberately kind of like scrappy looking on purpose. Mm -hmm. But like it, it, everyone in the room loved it. Like people were like laughing their heads off, like the energy was so high. So yeah. you can make even a very serious, technically boring subject matter, like exciting, fun, uh, mm -hmm. and a little bit silly. Wow. You put that wonderfully, Frankie. I think you're right, AI, the human element, but also be honest on what your brand, how you want your brand to be, look like, you know, um, is it a leader in the industry? Do you want to be an example, a role model, and therefore it's not just one direction you need to focus on, not just the product at least, it's everything else around it. And as you said, there's such incredible expertise behind what makes a brand, so it's, it's great to shed light on them as well. Um, we have a few fun um, questions. Go Surprise! <laughs> Love this. Um, so quick, uh, quick fire questions. So piece of advice you would give to your younger self? Oh, start learning AI the second it starts emerging. <laughs> no, I mean, obviously, like that's, the, you know, if only I could go back in time and get on the wave right, right away. Mm -hmm. But no, I think um, I'd actually go the opposite way, like really focus on human connect human connection and networking, right? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. go, make sure you find that time in your day to go to industry events, you know, go to seminars, learn, speak to people who are in your profession, but maybe not within your business. Like that network and kind of knowledge and mentorship mm -hmm. is so, so, so valuable. And I wish I'd spent more time in my earlier career doing things like this yeah. and kind of getting out of the office and not just being locked to my keyboard all day because I think it's really, really valuable. Great. You, sp you mentioned mentorship. Is there a mentor that you're particularly fond about or that a piece of advice that they share that you're like carrying with you up to this day? Yeah, 100%. Uh, I had a very, very good uh, manager at a previous company called Lattice. Uh, she was our VP of marketing for EMEA, one of the most impressive marketing leaders I've ever worked wow. with to this day. And I think the most important thing she told me that's always stuck with me is no is a full sentence. You do not need to, you know, put a load of stuff on the end of that to justify with, you know, buts and this and that and the other. No mm -hmm. is a full sentence. And it's really important to be 
just as good at saying no to the things that are going to distract you from the end point as it is to being super helpful and wanting to say yes to absolutely everything. Wonderful, Frankie. That's a great, great tip um, going forward. Thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciate it. Thank you.